Okay. All right, so again, welcome for those of you who are just joining. I am Laura Crandall. I'm the Director of Student Involvement and Leadership, which I'm part of the Division of Student Affairs. And I'm joined by our Centennial Hall staff, Kim Max and Megan Catalano, and then uh, some Syracuse University employees, uh, Ruth Sullivan, the dietitian at ESU, and um, Ryan Group, who is in housing meal plan and ID card services, and then also James Apola from the ESF Trailhead Cafe located in the Gateway Center. And kicking us off will be our Dean for Student Affairs, Dean Ann Lombard. And I'm just going to make sure we have everyone admitted in here. Again, this session is going to be recorded, so if you miss any parts of it or have to review it again, feel free to watch it when I push that out. All right, I'm just gonna hit next. Okay, so again, here is our session today. We're gonna talk about prior to arriving with our Dean for Student Affairs and just making sure you're all on the same page with what our plans are. And then we'll go to Centennial Hall with Megan and Kim. And then we'll talk about meal plans at ESF and SU. So if I can uh, kick it over to Dean Lombard, that would be great to talk about prior to arrival to campus. Okay, great. Thanks so much, Laura, and welcome everyone. I want to add my welcome to all of you, and we're pleased that you would tune in with us tonight. As Laura said, my name is Ann Lombard, and I serve as the Vice Provost and Dean for Student Affairs. I have the privilege of working with a team of, of staff who have responsibility for many of the out of classroom programs and resources and services available to our students at ESF. And we're looking forward to meeting your students this fall. So I wanna talk about a few things tonight. Um, I also wanna mention that when I'm finished, I will stay on and help to monitor the chat and include my contact information. So if there are questions that you have, you can either message me privately um, during the chat or you can um, reach out to me on your own tomorrow via phone or email and happy to help in any way that I can. So probably a big question that you all have on your mind is um, what our expectations are related to the COVID vaccine. Um, currently, because the vaccine is still considered experimental and hasn't been approved yet by the FDA, SUNY cannot require students to be vaccinated. Um, New York state law prohibits us from requiring something that's experimental. However, a couple of things. When the vaccine is approved by the FDA, Governor Cuomo has said that all CUNY and SUNY students will need to be vaccinated at that point. Secondly, because of the unique relationship that we have with Syracuse University, Syracuse, as a private institution, announced last spring that all their students would be required to be vaccinated. And because our students use those resources and facilities, any ESF student wishing to utilize Syracuse University programs, resources, and facilities will be required to be vaccinated, except for um, limited medical and religious exemptions from the vaccination. So all new students should have received an email from me earlier this summer. I've sent a couple of reminders. One was just a week or so ago and the other was a few weeks before that. The means to upload your vaccination information is not at the My ESF portal. Um, and you may be wondering why. That is an internal portal to ESF because we need to share vaccination information with our colleagues at Syracuse University. Students will need to upload their information via a link that I sent out in an email. So uh, it's possible that if you have been newly admitted that you might not yet have gotten that email from me, don't worry, you have plenty of time. What I would say to you now is if you haven't yet gotten your vaccination, you're going to want to do that. If you get a two-dose vaccination 
there aren't enough weeks left between now and the time that school starts to fulfill your vaccination um, series. So um, please do not go to upload your information through the link that I sent until two weeks after you get your last dose of the vaccine. So again, you're gonna upload that through a link in an email that I sent out to all new students. Don't worry yet, if you were newly admitted and haven't gotten that, I will continue to send reminders. So that's the first thing. Um, the second thing that I want to let you know is that we are following SUNY guidance as it relates to arrival on campus. And I will be providing, with, providing you with an update later this summer of what the testing requirements will be upon arrival to campus if you've not yet been vaccinated. So another important thing that I wanna to mention to you is that those students and faculty and staff who have been vaccinated are able to be maskless on campus um, you're able to, you know, distance yourself in the normal way and you are not required to get weekly testing. Students and faculty and staff who have not been vaccinated will need to continue to mask on campus. You will also need to socially distance yourself from people on campus and you will need to get weekly diagnostic testing. Um, that is different from the testing that we did last school year, which was surveillance testing at Syracuse University. SUNY guidance requires diagnostic testing on a weekly basis, and we are still working through the details of how we're going to make that happen on your campus or on our campus. So more information about that to come, but to plan ahead if you are not vaccinated. And then, as I said, the big thing is that you won't be able to utilize the facilities and resources at Syracuse University, which includes all of the dining facilities with the exception of the trailhead, classrooms, labs, libraries, recreational facilities, and so on, unless you're vaccinated. Like we did last year, students will be required to get a flu shot to utilize SU facilities. SU is requiring that again of their students so we will be requiring that as well of our students who need to use Syracuse University facilities. More to come related to that just to plan ahead. Flu shots aren't available yet. They'll be available later this fall. And I'm hopeful, but I can't confirm yet, I'm hopeful that our students will be able to get their flu shots on Syracuse University's campus. So um, I did mention the need for ongoing testing for people who are not vaccinated. And um, Centennial versus off-campus versus SU, I think I've kind of talked about that as I've been talking about what the expectations are. Um, really, I guess what I will say pretty bluntly is that it's it would be, I don't think possible for a first year student to not utilize facilities at Syracuse University because you're all required to have a meal plan and um, that's where the meal plan is fulfilled. So start planning if you haven't yet gotten your vaccination. If you have and you haven't submitted your information to us yet, you can go back into your email and look for that email from me or um, we'll be sending it again here shortly. So I'm gonna stop talking there shift my focus to the chat and start to answer some questions there, unless there's anything, Laura, that you would like me to add that I haven't. Um, can you just talk about two things? One, what they need for uploading the form, just so people understand that a little bit more. And then two, um, if they get any confirmation once they do upload the form and someone reviews it. Uh, that's great, Laura. Thank you very much for asking that question. So as I mentioned um, a few minutes ago, please don't go in to upload your information until two weeks after you've gotten your last vaccination. That's when you're considered fully vaccinated, two weeks after your either only dose of Johnson & Johnson or your second dose of Moderna or Pfizer. You'll need your vaccination card that they give you when you're vaccinated with you when you sit down at that link. 
So you're going to need your SUID number, which Laura should have sent to you in a letter. Um, so you should know what that is by now. Um, you're going to need that number and you're going to need a screenshot of both the front of your vaccination card and the back of your vaccination card. You're going to upload both of those through the link in the email that I sent. Um, and it does take a little bit of time and it does take a little bit on our end to verify that it takes a little while to load. It's kind of a clunky system. Um, but that's how that happens. And if you have any questions or concerns about that, you can always, always call our office if we can be helpful. You do, I'm just looking at the very bottom question. You do not need to bring your vaccination card with you to campus from our perspective. Um, I've taken pictures of both my vaccination card and my daughter's and have it in my phone. And I have my my cards locked in a safe box. So I don't, I, I don't think you're going to need them from our purposes, but there may be some other reason that you might need them that I, I can't think of right now. So I'll keep monitoring the chat, Laura, and happy to answer any questions that people might have. And as I said, um, I'll put my contact information there as well if you've got questions that you'd like to talk with me about one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. So thank you. Thank you. We'll kick it over to Kim and Megan next. Hello, everybody. My name is Kimberly Max, and I am the community manager for Centennial Hall. Uh, just a little bit about myself. I have been at ESF and Centennial Hall since 2010. Uh, for those of you who might know a little bit about history, Centennial Hall actually opened in 2011. So I have been around since the very beginning. Um, I actually worked at the building when it was just a hole in the ground and got to see the um, entire construction process. Um, so my responsibilities include overall oversight for the everything that happens within Centennial Hall, everything from maintenance and facilities to um, you know the student experience and making sure that we are supporting all of you and having a good um, strong semester and year um, and making sure that we are providing you with the resources that you need. So I'm going to ask Megan to quickly introduce herself um, and then we're going to talk about a couple of things. Good evening, everybody. My name is Megan Catalano and I am the Residential Experience Coordinator here. Um, I am pretty new to the job, but I am not new to uh, Syracuse. Um, so I look forward to getting to meet all of you students and showing you what Syracuse has to offer and um, utilizing all the resources that we have out here and making it a great year. Thank you, Megan. So most of you, if not all of you who are living in Centennial Hall should have received a large document with a lot of information that came out in conjunction with your room assignment. So there were two separate emails that were sent, one that had your room and your roommate um, information, and then a separate email that had a link to a very large document. And once I'm done, I will put that link in the chat for all of you in case you have lost that. Um, but that document has so much information in it. Please take a look at it. Um, it is very important that we read um, everything from front cover to back cover. Um, we're getting a lot of questions right now that are actually right in the document. So we want to be helpful, but we also want to help you help yourself. Um, so first year students are going to move in um, between Monday, August 23rd and Wednesday, August 25th. Those signups are going to be coming out um, at the very latest, the end of next week. I'm hoping for the beginning of next week. Um, I'm working on putting together that information as we speak. So students are going to be able to sign up for their own day and time. Mm -hmm. So they're going to sign up either for a four hour slot in the morning or a four hour slot in the afternoon. The slots are going to be 8 a.m. to noon and then 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. We are asking that folks keep their, their group of people helping them to move into two people, really just to help, help us get people in and out and make things efficient for everybody. Um, 
So we are going to do morning and afternoon and you'll be able to sign up for that. We're gonna have plenty of slots every day. So please don't worry about, oh, I'm not gonna get the slot that I need. There's gonna be plenty of time. If for some reason you get closed out from that, um, please email me directly and we will make something work. Um, so this is just a reminder and there will probably be more reminders as I continue for students. You're gonna wanna check your email. So these, this information is gonna go out to the, in, the email address that you have in our housing system. So when you filled out your housing application, you put in there a, an email address. So that could be your personal email um, or, or whatever email you have in there. This email is gonna go directly there. The other thing to know is that you can update that email yourself. So please, you know, if you're gonna use your um your syr email please update it you know, update that yourself there um the other thing is that if you have signed up um, our system actually if you've got a package it'll send you a text message so if you have put in the wrong phone number or say you put in a parent phone number or guardian phone number um please make sure to change that to yourself we've had um a lot of students come up to us being like why is my mom getting all my package notifications? So make sure that your phone number is up to date in there. Um, we will also call you if you get a perishable package. So um, you want those phone, up, phone calls to come directly to you. Um, so our transfer friends, you guys are gonna be coming in on Thursday, August 26th. Um, and similar deal, you're going to sign up for morning or afternoon. Um, you can come in, um, you know, you could come in later than that, but orientation is on Friday. So you're gonna to wanna to be there for orientation to make sure that you get all of the information that you need. Um, in terms of departures, um, we do close for winter break. Um, if folks have um, extenuating circumstances, we will work with them. But we do ask that out of respect for your classmates and your peers, that folks do depart 24 hours after your last exam. Um, we will be open until Saturday, December 18th at 2 p.m. Um, so you've got to leave by whichever is earlier. Um, 2 p.m. is the absolute latest. So here's the deal. Our RA staff, who are also students, they can't leave until all of the students leave. And so they want to start winter break just as much as you do. So we want to make sure that everybody goes home safely um, and that they can also get out of Centennial with plenty of time to getting to where they want to be. It's very similar at the end of the academic year. So 24 hours after your last exam, that date is weird. So we're going to be asking people to be out by Thursday, May 5th, because finals actually end on Wednesday. So please be planning ahead for that. Um, you know, we want to make sure that folks are kind of thinking ahead, especially if you are setting up plane tickets and you're coming from far away. We want to make sure that you know those dates. All righty, Laura, you can move next. Okay. So when you come to move in, um, you're going to want to bring a couple of different things. You're going to want to make sure that you bring a photo ID. Um, we want to make sure that you are who you say that you are. Um, you know, not, not that we're giving out somebody's keys to somebody else. We want to make sure that we are um, kind of just talking to the right people. Um, so in accordance with state and local guidelines and ESF guidelines, if you are not vaccinated, you are going to need um, a face covering. So please make sure to bring that if you are not vaccinated. Um, if you feel as if you need to bring your COVID-19 um, information, um, please bring that. But also Dean Lumber did say that we're going to be sending out more information and more instructions over the summer. So again, here is your second reminder to check your email. Um, you're also going to want to make sure that you um, make sure that you have your flu shot um, information for access to Syracuse University facilities. The last thing that we ask that you bring with you is some patience. So there are a lot of people, there's a lot of things happening. Um, our staff, um, we are a small but mighty staff, and we are here to help, and we're trying to move as fast as we can, but when we've got 50 people moving in in a, in a time slot, 
there's only so fast that we can go. So please bring your patients. It's gonna be a fun day. We've got a lot of great things planned. Um, and so we wanna make sure that people get in, are comfortable, are having fun, um, and that we are as helpful as possible. Um, so please just bring that patience, um, we, particularly if you're talking to our students. All right, you can move on to the next slide, Laura. Okay. Um, so we are going to send out that email. Um, again, it's going to be kind of a packet of information that I'm going to send out. It'll have, a, again, a lot of information, including some detailed driving instructions. We do ask that people um, come in a very specific route. And we do that because Syracuse University is also moving in on those same days. And so our route actually will help you avoid all of their traffic because they have probably, you know, a good 3,500 students moving in those days. So we want to kind of avoid that. Um, remember, you can bring, you know, two parents, guardians, guests into the building with you during move-in. And if you are coming on Monday, Megan's going to talk about shortly some fun stuff that we've got going on um, those days so that you are going to be able to meet some people, have some fun, do some cool things in the city of Syracuse. Alrighty, Megan, it's all you. Absolutely. Um, so if you're moving in on that Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, we will be keeping you busy um, and making sure that you're starting to make some memories with people even before orientation even officially kicks off. Um, so we will get that all taken care of for you. We have uh, trips planned to the New York State Fair. Um, we're bringing uh, escape rooms um, to Centennial Hall. Um, we have some blacklight mini golf planned. Um, just really want to get you out and about meeting people. Um, so up here on the screen, we have a few examples of some other items that we might be doing throughout the year as well, or ones that we've done in the past. So going out to a Syracuse Mets game, going apple picking, going hiking, um, going to the zoo, Syracuse Crunch, um, succulents, terrariums, we do all sorts of crafty things here in Centennial Hall. So um, we really want to um, have a little fun. You are busy in the classroom, it's stressful. Um, we wanna get you making some memories here in Centennial Hall. All righty, thank you, Megan. So are there any questions that we can answer for folks? Um, I've been trying to hop into the chat to answer some questions, but if there are questions that I can answer, I would be more than happy to do so for folks. Thanks, Kim. I saw that you already answered the one about return back in January when the semester begins. So just to read that answer out loud, it will definitely depend on ASHU basketball schedule because parking and, and traffic is really, really busy. So we always want to make sure we're kind of cognizant of that. So I know, Kim, as soon as we get that firmed up with ASHU, we'll get those dates out. Um, and, and the start of classes, I don't have that date right off the, my, the top of my hand, but they're um, in January, if, if someone could put the date in there, I, I know I'll mess up my Zoom here um, when classes start. And then can you just comment quickly on the flu shot? I know that that may have been an old bullet from perhaps a different session, but if you can just touch on the flu shot and then there's a couple other questions coming in. Yeah, let me answer the question about the flu shot. Sorry for any confusion about that. The flu shot likely won't be available before move in. So you're not going to be required to have that at the time that you move in, but once it becomes available and Syracuse University has a deadline for their students to obtain that, our students will be required to get that as well in order to use Syracuse University facilities. So um, this is as good a time as any to remind you that our official means of communication with you is your syr.edu email account. Lots and lots of information is sent out via that email about COVID, about flu shots, about insurance deadlines, about all kinds of things. So if you're not in the habit yet, make sure you get used to checking that address on a regular basis because that's where we'll provide important information to you. 
Alrighty, so I'm going to just start going down the list for these questions because I think everybody is probably interested in some of these answers. Um, so there is a question about refrigerators and microwaves. We actually provide all of the microwaves and all of the refrigerators. There is no rental um, for that. We provide that for the students. We actually do not allow students to bring their own because ours are um, their Energy Star, their and then the microwaves are also um, set up um, so that if you burn the popcorn or you put the Easy Mac into the fridge without the water, that it's actually going to shut off and not set off the fire alarms. So we provide all of that for you um, so that you don't have to bring that. Um, there was a question about Thanksgiving break. Centennial Hall does remain open over Thanksgiving and spring breaks. Um, we do ask that students for safety and security purposes tell us that they're going to be in the building, but please know that there is not many people around. It's very kind of ghost towny um, around campus, both at ESF and SU, so there's not a lot of people around. There's also um, very little food service available. Um, so it's a bit of a hike um, if you are um, looking for food service. But yes, we do remain open over Thanksgiving break. Um, there are ticket deals. Um, Laura would know more about ticket deals um, for dome events and some of those other, other things. Um, but that's another thing that will come across your email. So please make sure again to read your email. Um, we do have a community kitchen available for folks. Um, this is not an everyday cooking kitchen. Um, it is for the occasional pan of brownies, the occasional dinner. Um, we have about, you know, we're going to have about 520 ish students in the building. And so if they're all trying to use one kitchen um, and somebody's monopolizing it, it's not fair to everybody that lives in the building. So we want to be respectful and share. Um, but it is fully stocked. Um, I restock it once a year. So if things grow legs and walk away, um, unfortunately, I only restock things once a year um, in terms of supplies. Um, Aaron, I will contact you directly um, to talk about the, the triple room. Um, laundry rooms, we do have two laundry rooms. There is one in, um, pretty much directly below where um, the double rooms are. And then there's one a little bit further. Um, it's, but they're both accessible to students. They're both pretty much right off of the elevators. A wash is $1.50 and a dry is also $1.50. They are high efficiency machines. Um, so please make sure that you bring the high efficiency um, laundry detergent. Um, the other thing is that they do not take coins. So don't bring rolls of quarters. Um, they take an app or credit cards um, only. Uh, so financial aid. Um, so we actually bill um, per semester through your, through, through your ESF um, student bill. So those were actually available um, on July 15th. And so you, your financial aid will apply directly to um, your Centennial Hall bill as well. Please do not pay on the um, housing portal. Um, I can't take that off, but we don't accept monthly payments. You're gonna pay that all through your ESF bill. If you do pay through um, our, or try to pay through our portal, I'm gonna have to like reverse it and do a bunch of stuff. Um, and sometimes I miss those. So please don't do that. Um, just pay it once. Um, in terms of the floors, it's all co-ed. Um, we, we do um, each, uh, in the double rooms in particular, um, they're in uh, blocks of four rooms. So about eight students, depending on deluxe singles. Um, and so there's, I tried to uh, assign it so that there's an equal number um, in, in, in each alcove, in each um, kind of area of four rooms. Um, answer that. All righty. Um, so in terms of uh, hot drinks, so one, microwave works really well for heating up some water. 
Um, you can have a water boiler um, as long as it does not get hot on the outside and it has an automatic shutoff. Um, the key is to is that it doesn't get hot on the outside, um, and the and that's really much the big thing. The fire marshal doesn't like things that get hot. Um, the other thing to kind of think about is if you're in a double room in particular, um, there's not a lot of space in those. Um, so really kind of think about what you're bringing um, and is it safe to use. But um, in terms of appliances, um, first year students are, are pretty restricted in what they can bring. Um, very much nothing that gets hot on the outside, no hot plates, no toaster ovens, nothing like that. Um, coffee makers, um, any Keurig single cup type, just again, nothing that has a hot plate on it. Um, washers and dryers take, take debit, um, any kind of card it takes. Um, in terms of a vacuum, we do have vacuums available for students to check out. Um, they are the heavy duty vacuums. Um, but the one thing is students tend to think that vacuums pick up everything. So we find a lot of stuff in the bags um, and then it actually clogs everything up so they're not sucking up as much dirt. Um, so we just ask that students, you know, don't try to pick up all of the paper clips and thumbtacks and everything that's on the floors. Um, you gotta pick that stuff up. Um, Let's see here. Um, if you have financial aid questions, there's a question in here about scholarships. So please make sure, um, you know, if you've got questions about scholarships and things, uh, make sure to call the financial aid office or the Bursar office to ask about bills. Um, we've been working on putting charges on the bills. It's a manual process. So we just finished that up today. Um, the sinks in the rooms are just fine. Syracuse has some of the cleanest water in the country. So the water anywhere is pretty good. And Matthew, um, I will contact you directly about um, the four bedroom apartment. Um, transfer students, you all have a different set of things. So um, take a look at your contract and you're gonna, and you've got some, some different, different things. Um, Aaron, the, the candle policy, you're gonna like, just come talk to me um, about religious purposes uh, because we've got to make sure um, that things are in a safe manner. Um, so we got to talk about that uh, specifically like together. Um, let's see here internet access and Wi-Fi, um, you do have your own account. Um, it's very high speed. We actually just did a huge upgrade um, last year. So make sure um, that you know each room has its own access point. So you're gonna wanna make sure that that's plugged in. Um, we have a company that we contract through and we'll give you all of that information um, when, you come to, um, when you come to campus. Uh, one disappointing thing, um, more and more students, they all have Netflix or Hulu and all of those things. So we are not offering cable TV at this time. Um, so we are going to, we'll send that out um, with our move-in information, but make sure that you're gonna bring a, if you want local stations, you're gonna wanna bring an antenna um, or uh, you know, make sure that you've got all your streaming services set up. And rental insurance, um, we highly recommend rentals, renters insurance. Um, the reason being, so this is my classic example, um, cause I've had this happen. Students are playing football in the hallway. They hit a sprinkler head and that is 20 gallons of water a minute. Um, and you are responsible for the cost of that damage. Renters insurance, or if your student is covered under homeowners insurance, um, is going to be very helpful in that situation. But none of y'all are going to do that. So um, I think that's it for the questions. I'm going to stay in the chat um, and continue to answer questions. So please let me know, and I will pop my contact information as well as the um, the document document that came out with housing assignments in the chat. Thank you, everybody.
Thank you so much, Kim and Megan. We're gonna jump right over next to meal plans. So we will have James, Ryan, and Ruth all kind of sprinkle in here. I'm gonna have them introduce as they share, but as you can see, I know this is a little blurry. This is actually taken from Centennial Hall's booklet that you received, but these are the meal plan choices. So SU and Orange, oh, we have a little line here, but SU has changed their meal plans and I'll let Ryan get into them. Um, so if you heard from other upper class students or families, they are a lot different. I think that they've made a great move. And then we'll go over what Trailhead is as well. So we'll kind of maybe go back and forth a little bit to this because I think this is a great way to break it down. But I'm gonna kick it over to Ryan to start. Hello everyone. Um, my name is Ryan Troop, uh, Associate Director of Housing Meal Plan and ID Card Services at Syracuse University. Um, welcome to you all. Um, I'm just gonna quickly review our meal plans and thank you to Laura who mentioned um, our meal plans just went over a full um, you know, rehaul. They're all brand new. Um, so if you did hear from an upperclassman student, um, you will notice the option they recommended I pick is not an option. Um, and that's because we've made our meal plans more flexible and more user-friendly. So um, our meal plans now, and actually if we can go back one slide, if you don't mind, because that slide is perfect. And I think it helps um, helps you understand. So your meal plan can consist of um, unlimited. So you'll see at the bottom there, in the bottom left of that orange, first orange box, uh, we'll start the highest plans and we'll go down. So you have two unlimited plans. Unlimited means exactly that. You can go into a Syracuse University dining center as often as you, was, as you would like um, throughout the day, throughout the semester, um, no limits. So if you go at nine o'clock and then another group of friends go at 930 and you say, hey, I'll go back with you, you could go right back into that dining facilities. The big difference between those two unlimited plans, one comes with dining dollars and one does not. And I'll explain the difference in those. Then the next choices that you see are the 220, the 130 and 85. All that is, is that is just how many meals per um, semester you are going to uh, be purchasing. So if you purchase the 220, that means you have 220 meals to use throughout the semester. If you purchase the 85, you have the 85 meals. We also on our website, on our Housing Meal Plan ID Card website, do have a budgeting sheet that you could even print. So you can see each week where you should be. So if you're in the 220 plan on week five, you should be approximately at this, at this point. That way you know if you're uh, a little ahead or a little behind. Uh, a few things to note with these. Um, we often get asked questions about guest uh, meals. Guest meals are not a separate uh, entity now. You can use any of those block plans on, or any of those 85, 130, or 220 on a guest if you would like. So there's not a set number of them. Um, it's up to you. You can use them at your discretion. The unlimited plans, they each come with 10 guest meals because you can't unlimitedly bring a guest into the dining center. Um, Dining dollars, so most of those plans come with dining dollars. Dining dollars are supplemental funds that you can use outside of an SU dining center, so an all-you-can-eat um, uh, place to eat, and more a la carte. So um, in our Shine Student Center, we have Core Life Eatery, or we have Dunkin' Donuts. If you're just going to buy a nice coffee, um, you can use some of the dining dollars that you have in your account. The big thing with dining dollars is they run out at the end of the semester and you'll get a new set of dining dollars the next semester. So that is a very quick overview. Um, I know the 85 um, is the 85 block is the, the uh, lowest plan you can be on if you're living in Centennial Hall. Um, and I'll pass it over now. Um, so that um, James could talk a little bit about Trailhead and then I can pop back on a little bit and go through the other slides as well. Thanks, Ryan. Um, the $450 that come with the 85 or 130 meals from Syracuse University are a declining balance, which means for every dollar that you spend of that $450 comes off the Trailhead card. It's a separate card that is not linked to your ESF slash SU identification card. These cards are gonna be handed out to you during move-in. Uh, we will be tabling at Centennial Hall as you move into Centennial Hall. Uh, all incoming students, whether you're first year or transfer students who are living in Centennial Hall this year are getting a reusable to-go container as well as a reusable soup container. So we'll be handing out 
your trailhead cards as well as reusable containers. And for any upperclassmen who may be listening or who see this down the road, we'll also be selling reusable to-go containers as well as soup containers in a bundle for $8 a piece at the Trailhead Cafe. The dining, or excuse me, the Trailhead dollars roll over from semester to semester. They, uh, you get an additional $450 in the uh, spring semester. So if you have $100 when you go home for the winter break, uh, when you come back in the spring semester, you'll have $550 at the Trailhead Cafe to spend. Uh, we're open uh, really breakfast, lunch, um, 7.30 to 4.30 right now. And um, we're the only place on the ESF campus to eat. We had a secondary location uh, a few years ago, but that building is currently being renovated and the secondary, there is no other secondary location. So uh, besides the Trailhead Cafe, if we're too busy or you don't have time to get to us, uh, you'd have to go to Syracuse University's dining facilities that are throughout their campus. Great. So I'll just pop back in really quick. Um, so meal plans, we talked about the difference between board swipes and dining dollars. So I did see a question in the chat. I'm trying to follow along and pay attention. So we will catch up, I promise. Um, uh, you could use dining dollars in a uh, dining hall. Um, there is a cash value to each of those, um, you know, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's much more advantageous of you to use your board swipe um, as than overpaying the cash rate for that. And those rates, I don't have them at the top of my head. It's, I believe it's about $10 for breakfast, 15 for lunch, 21 for dinner. Um, so it's much more um, better bang for your buck to use a board swipe if you have one. Um, you will purchase these uh, meal plans through the MySlice portal in your, and it will be billed to your SU Bursar account. Um, a few things to note, if you do take part in our unlimited plans, you'll be required to register your hand through a hand reader and you can actually, uh, and any student is eligible to do this if they would like, um, you are able to register if you want, if you're on a block and this is sort of an easy pass into the dining hall. So it'll sort of be a fast lane that you can just swipe your hand through a biometric reader and it will give you access to the dining hall. So you're not waiting in line to hand your card over to a cashier to swipe your card contactless um, and uh, a little bit quicker for you. So do know that will be an option for you. You'll receive information. You'll actually see us in the halls at the beginning of the semesters registering people's hands if they're interested, but do know if you're on an unlimited plan, you'll be required to take part in that program. Um, there's another piece too to mention. Um, I did see a question about Q's Cash. Q's Cash is a declining balance account that will be right on your card. Um, it's not a separate Q's Cash card, but basically it's supplemental funds that you can put on your card to be able to use at um, the SU campus store and SU um, locations uh, around campus. So SU vending, um, campus store, food services location. So let's say you run out of dining dollars, but you want to go to Core a little bit more or check out Panda Express, you could add Q's Cash onto your account and do so. And then your Q's Cash is, Q's Cash does roll from fall to spring. At the end of spring, it would be refunded, what your balance is refunded back to your SU Bursar account. Um, so I know there is, uh, this is confusing for Syracuse students. And now we're adding the layer that you're ESF and you have your own accounts and there's as multiple um, avenues to get funds. So we'd like to help you with that. Uh, I will make sure um, I put our number or our email address in the chat here before I go. Certainly give us a call. We can walk you through them. We understand that there's 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 many layers here. There's trailheads and Q's cash and dining dollars and board swipes. So we will help you work through those. And the last thing I would just like to mention is um, we also uh, will produce your um, ESF ID card. Um, and to do so, you'll need to make sure you submit your photo. Um, so to submit your photo, you do that right through our Get website um, or the Get app on your phone, mobile app. I also say if you download the Get Mobile app, you can actually sign in and use um, a digital uh, your digital um, ID card to be able to pay at locations. So just please make sure you get those in so we can have those cards ready for you upon your arrival. So I see the chat flowing. So I am going to try to pop back and I'll try to answer as many as I can as, as folks finish here and I'll pass it back to James. Brian, before um, James goes, mm -hmm. so people are clear on the SU-1, um, and I know it is a little confusing, but 
board swipes are for dining halls and kind of that buffet atmosphere where you eat what you want and you pick up the, the, the different stations in a dining hall. And there's, I think, five dining halls on campus, correct? That's correct. Yep. And then can you explain dining dollars versus Q's cash one more time for people? Yeah, absolutely. Basically, they can function very similarly. Here's the difference. Dining dollars have to be used on food items and they come only with a meal plan. So you can't purchase more dining dollars. They are just attached to a meal plan and they can only be used on food. So you could go to Dunkin', you could go to Panda Express, you go to Core, um, you can't go to the campus store. Q's cash, you add that supplemental balance yourself and you can add as much as you want or you don't have to, it's optional. You don't have to take part in Q's cash. That is used, you can use it on food and not uh, non-food items. So the campus store, um, if you wanted to get an SU hoodie, um, you could use those funds there and they're not associated with a meal plan. So you don't have to have a meal plan to have Q's cash, but you do have to have a meal plan to have dining dollars. A little tricky, but, um, and dining dollars run out each semester, Q's cash. If you have a balance, you will receive that balance back. Basically, Q's cash is an on-campus debit account. There's really a way to look at it. You can use it where you wanna use it, um, where dining dollars um, is for food only. Thanks, Ryan. Um, a few things to go over uh, regarding the trailhead uh, card. So the trailhead card, like I mentioned, it does roll over from semester to semester. However, if students find out that they have used too much money too quickly, they can always add money to their card. Uh, Ryan mentioned, um, I believe he mentioned GET uh, previously. We also use GET. Um, you have to make sure that if you have GET for SU, that you also have GET through uh, SUNY ESF backslash Morrisville. Um, you're going to have to be able to toggle between both of those accounts from time to time, but you can add your money, more money if you wanted to, to your trailhead card right through GET. Um, and it's a good idea to maybe sync a credit or debit card to that uh, sooner rather than later if you, if you end up seeing that you're using more money than you were anticipating. Um, with that, with GET, and I'm going to go ahead and speak for Ryan here, but I think that uh, they use GET as well for mobile ordering at certain locations. Uh, mobile ordering is also available at the Trailhead Cafe through the GET app. Um, GET is uh, really a, a great tool for the students to have, not only just for meal plans, but it's also uh, great for other items, um, transportation, uh, calendars, things like that, really keeping your accounts active. Um, because uh, we're a declining balance, um, I always stress to students that uh, to be careful with your money. Um, it is very common for students to spend a lot of their trailhead dollars quickly, and it is very common for students to realize that they have a trailhead card in December, and they come back in February, and instead of $450, they now have $900 that they are going to try and have to spend. Um, so I do, I do encourage students and families to pay attention to those accounts and to pay attention to those bills as they come across your uh, mailbox and emails. Um, there is a small window to change your meal plans. It's uh, the first two weeks of each each semester. But remember, if you're living on campus, you have to have a meal plan. Um, and that's, that's something that people tend to forget uh, even quicker than when they run out of money. So um, we are actively hiring. Um, and I would go ahead and say that Ryan and his team are probably in the same boat. We are actively hiring. Um, so if you've worked in food and, and, and you wanna keep working in food in your past, um, I won't lie, it's uh, slim pickings right now. So I would encourage anybody who's thinking about needing or wanting a job on campus to certainly, uh, you know, uh, think about coming to work with us. Um, you can also go work with Ryan and his team. Um, we are strictly just ESF students um, at the Trailhead Cafe. And um, I think that's all I can talk about right now. So thank you, I look forward to meeting most of you and uh, 
Have a good night. Thank you, James. And I know uh, there are a lot of questions about meal plans, so we'll try and get to those if we aren't getting them in the chat. But last, we're going to turn it over to Ruth Sullivan to talk about dietary um, accommodations at USU. Hi, everybody. My name is Ruth Sullivan. I am the registered dietitian for food services, also the assistant director of nutrition management. Um, I do a lot for SU, but one of my main jobs is working with students who have special diets, food allergies, celiac disease, um, any type of food intolerance, um, whatever that may be. And if I've talked to you in the past, I've already sent you the information on our website, foodservices.syr.edu, under nutrition special diets. It kind of explains everything with food allergies, celiac disease, and what we do. Um, in our dining centers, we only have for peanut butter, and I want to, I'd say that because that's our biggest allergy. We have a peanut butter PC, so um, that's all we have for peanut butter. For tree nuts, we have coconut and some of our recipes and almond milk for cereal. Uh, each dining center does have a gluten-free section that's purely prepped, gluten-free, um, and uh, that's online. We have an online menu. If you go to our website now, you can actually see the current online menu. It doesn't have the gluten um, free area in it yet because we don't have anybody on campus we're serving with um, that needs gluten free. Um, but we work with any diet. We work, work this with. This is some tea though. I'm impressed. I don't know who that is. <laughs> Did we lose everybody? <laughs> okay, so. Um, so we, I do need medical documentation and you can go on our website and you can actually see what we need for medical documentation. Uh, and that's just because we want to make sure that we have the right diagnosis and that we're doing the right thing for the student. We've, um, we've, we've had students that have self-diagnosed themselves with a food allergy and ended up allergic to something else. So we definitely uh, need that medical documentation. Uh, I am always around for questions. Uh, we also work with students and buy find special food items. And when we get the medical documentation, we can go to Wegmans and go to our local stores and buy foods for students if uh, they um, need it. I just saw something about vegan options. We have quite a few vegan options on campus, vegetarian. We have actually a separate section in each dining center. And Sadler will have a lot more vegan options because there tends to be more students who eat vegan that eat at Sadler. But every dining center um, has a vegan uh, section. And if you're interested, we're always looking for great vegan recipes that you might have. You can actually send them um, to me and uh, we try to test those and put them in our dining centers. Uh, and we work really hard for students who have special diets to make sure that they're getting the foods that they want and that they need. Uh, so we, we have um, a menu committee and we take all kinds of suggestions from students. And if you ever have a question, if you have a complaint, a concern, don't let it wait. Um, I'm gonna, I'll pop my email into the uh, chat make sure um, that you are contacting me and letting me know if there's an issue, if there's something special you wanna see. I'd hate for it to come out when you go home for the holidays. So make sure you contact me because I'm always available um, to answer any questions that you have. So I don't see anything in the chat. So somebody wants somebody, if you can talk about the GET app, that would probably be Ryan or James. Yeah, so the GET app is going to be a little tricky. Um, so both universities use the GET app. Get, at, GET is the way that you can add funds onto your account and you can use your, you can check balances. So you can download the GET app on your phone. You'll just log back in and out, whether you use your SU login or then you log into the, your ESF account. So anything SU related, so those meal plans, uh, you know, the unlimited, the block meal plans, the Q's cash, the dining dollars, you'd log into your SU account to see that, and you'd log into your SU account to add Q's cash. 
Then uh, if you need to use your trailhead or your ESF, um, you know, add funds to or order like James was talking about, um, you would then can log into the get app through your ESF login. So it's just sort of a toggle back and forth. The great thing is your ESF or your ESF ID card has all of it on there. So you don't have to obviously toggle your card. You'll, um, all of that will be on your ID card. So hopefully that helps a little bit there. I did put a link in chat to Q's Cash on that page actually, that Q's Cash page is a link to the Get app and the Get website to be able to help you um, do that. So hopefully that clears that up a little bit. It is a little confusing there, but um, we can help you through. Thank you all so much. I just wanna make sure we're clear on the billing as well. Um, so your ESF bill was sent out around July 15th. And in there, you will have your trailhead if you signed up for one at that point and your housing information and your housing bill based on your room type, first years and transfers, et cetera. So that, and, and your tuition and all other fees are for ESF are in that bill. Really your SU bill is, is your meal plan. And if you are a transfer commuter with a parking pass, it will be on your SU bill. You were given an estimate, as I think someone asked, that was just based on a typical room, um, but your final bill will be sent in September and due October. Very few students had a meal plan for the earlier bill, which I think went out in early June. So most of you, if not all of you, your bill will not be due until October. In terms of refunds, the refunds will be processed right after the start of the semester, and you will get refunds through, if you set it up through Bank Mobile. Um, and if you're an international student, you'll get a refund check. So you'll then take your, your, your refund or your overage that will go towards the SU meal plan if that's part of your financial aid and bring it physically over to the SU Bursar office. So if you have any questions though, please reach out to the Bursar office or if you need to look further into your financial aid, we always say it's best to talk to financial aid on that. I know that I see a bunch more in the chat. I just wanna recap. Um, we'll do Q&A if we miss any. We do have two more sessions after this. So we have one next week on student mental health and wellness. And then our last session, we'll just be talking about student life and our programming plan. So you'll meet a lot of the programming offices within the college. And again, I'm so sorry if we missed some of your comments on the chat. I am going to just see if people can start um, answering some questions, but I think that there's quite a bit on meal plans, but I know that we've been kind of shooting them over with answers. So um, if you, how do you know your ESF ID? So one thing, um, and I'll go over this a little bit. You are most new students, if not all, unless you're a very, very new accepted student, have an ESF ID, which is a version of the first and last name, maybe a part of their middle name. Um, and that will be how students get into their My ESF portal. They do need to go through their applicant portal to get a PIN number. And the instructions are in this email and as well as the new student checklist. You will also get an SU email and SU credentials. So, um, and one more thing is there is a banner ID or a student ID number that's in the My ESF portal. It begins with an F. That number is for ESF purposes but we haven't fully um, started to use that number yet. It's a very new system. The second piece again is the SU credentials. So you will get to start an SU ID number, which is printed on your green ESF ID card, which if I could find mine, I'd show you. Um, that ID card um, is what you use again for your meal plans at SU. You will use that ID number to activate your net ID, which is again, a version of your first and last name. Um, very often, in most cases, your, your ESF credential and your SU credential are very similar, but not the same. I have seen some that are the same. So for example, I'm LD Crandall at ESF, but I might be L Crandall at SU. So again, pay particular attention to them. Again, two colleges, two systems, two different accounts. Our official means of communication, and we've said a lot about email, is your syr.edu email. And that is because you register for classes through SU. So everyone will then communicate with you. ESF chose to use your SU credentials over your ESF one. So 
If you have questions though about your emails, um, there is another thing that is newer. Students do have to get a Duo app to um, for security reasons. And that link has been pushed out a few times, but we're happy to go through that again. Usually any errors that are happening are either students are putting in the wrong credentials on the, on, you know, the SU credentials on the ESF site or the ESF on the SU site, or they didn't do the Duo security app. So if we missed your um, question, just again, please put that in the chat and I'll ask our panelists to again, put their contact information at the end. I know we're, we're about uh, time, but if you, you know, if we missed your question, just again, put it in the chat and it's fresh at the bottom. I apologize. It was very active, which we appreciate the questions because um, then you'll be more informed for orientation in the start of classes. Is the key fob to enter the building the same fob for the students' room? Yeah, so each student um, will get um, a key fob to get into the building, and it is the same fob to get into the student's room. If you are in one of our two-bedroom suites, or if you're a transfer student in a four-bedroom apartment, you will also get a key to your bedroom. That is a hard key, so please make sure that you mean you know don't lose that. Um, the other thing is you will get a small mailbox key. Again, um, please don't lose those. Um, we do do lockouts, but there are fees associated with that. Um, so the easiest thing is just keep your keys on you at all times. Thank you so much. And I'll just post the link to the ESF portal that I was, sorry, the ESF checklist that I was mentioning. Um, Oh, this is a good question. So ESF classes at SU and ESF are not built separately. The only time you might have a separate bill is if there's an extra fee for a course, but your uh, part of the package of being at ESF is that you get a limited number of courses that you take at, at SU. It's an SU accessory instruction. So you will not, if you just start taking physics or a calculus class or whatever, and you're under your limit, you won't have any bill. But if, for example, you go over your limit or there's a special scuba diving class and there's a fee associated with that, then you will get that fee. So great question. I really appreciate you all tuning in today. I am still trying to find that link real quick to just send to you all, but I appreciate you being here and asking these great questions. Again, the session is being recorded so we can um, share this information again. If there are other things, again, I appreciate our panelists sending out all of their contact information. That's really, really helpful. And thank you again for joining us. I hope the weather isn't too uh, dark and dreary like it is in Syracuse in central New York. And again, thank you to our colleagues across the street at Syracuse University for tuning in and supplying meal plans and accommodations for our students. And I just posted the link to the new student checklist and in there right in the beginning is the links to get the ESF ID and SU credentials set up. Again, I'm happy to take questions from students via email, as I know sometimes just those reminders of what the two different credentials are is really helpful. If you don't have any further questions, that's all for now. Um, I'm sure if you need to ask, I'll stick around for a minute. But if not, have a great night and thanks again for tuning in. Thank you everyone so much. Thank you, Laura, nice job. Thanks everyone for keeping the chat going and active and helping. Wow, yeah, lots of questions tonight. Good yeah. question. Thank God I learned to type in high school.
<laughs> it's really hard to type and manage the chat because I end up advancing a slide because if you're, it's very good. <laughs> so uh, I had to stop in the middle there. <laughs> but, All right. See everybody tomorrow. Good night. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.